Yeah, it's not. It's just, it's just I got a message on Twitter that they needed people at the train station. My first day here was the 7th of March. So shortly after the war started, Ukrainians were already arriving in Austria. And we volunteers came here who speak Russian and Ukrainian and just help people with food, hot drinks, train tickets, if they were staying in Austria, if they needed a hotel room for the night, whatever it was, that's what we were helping with. And then it, the grocery project, the grocery card project came about because we realized there was a demand. The people had run out of the money that they brought with them. The money they're getting from the state was not enough, or in many cases has still hasn't been paid yet. And I decided that food help it would be the most one of the most effective ways that we could help. And with the card, it allows people to make their own choices, and we can also send the cards across the country. So the problem is, is this refugee business model we have in Austria, which is you put refugees in a hotel or a dorm and they don't get the food money themselves. Some middleman gets the money and pretends to feed them. But what I'm hearing is that the food, and what I'm seeing, when they showed me the pictures, is the food that was being served, they were saying a lot of times was inedible, especially for the children. It wasn't the kind of food that they could eat, and it wasn't enough. There wasn't enough fresh produce, wasn't enough protein, meat, and things like that. So the problem is when they are taken care of by the state, they don't receive the money themselves to buy the food. They would all prefer to be in charge of that process themselves, to get those six euros a day or whatever the amount is, buy their own food, prepare their own food, and take care of themselves. Instead, there seems to be this business model, which I imagine developed in earlier refugee waves, uh, which exists in Austria, and frankly, I think just takes their dignity away and also takes their independence away and causes a lot of problems and especially for the little kids. There's so many moms writing me and saying my kid isn't eating anything but bread. My kid can't eat this food. They need soups, they need fresh produce, they need eggs, basic things that they're used to having at home. They're not being served. A lot of times the food is actually being brought in. It's not being cooked on site. They've also told me that a lot of them have had been in the hospital with vomiting, with food poisoning, with but different kinds of viruses going through. So I can imagine it's just a bad situation. The food is the biggest problem. They tell me the hotel itself is fine. The room is fine. Everything is fine. We're grateful that there are no bombs flying over us. But we need to do something because the kids aren't eating. Man muss ganz klar sagen, das Essen ist nicht anders als das, was in den anderen Pensionistenhäusern zur Verfügung gestellt wird. Wir haben es jetzt mit dem Feedback der Bewohnerinnen adaptiert. Das heißt, wir haben jetzt zum Beispiel eingeführt, Mittwoch ist immer Borschtag. Und ähm, wir haben uns stark an der ukrainischen Küche orientiert, haben uns auch Rezepte von den Bewohnerinnen geben lassen und sind da stark in Richtung Eintopf, viel mehr mit Kartoffeln etc. jetzt gegangen, weil wir einfach die Erfahrung gemacht haben, dass das Essen, was für uns in Österreich äh, normal ist, natürlich mit kulturellen bedingten äh, Faktoren für Ukrainerinnen nicht so gut schmeckt.